Hi, my name is Barb Nangle. I'm the founder of Higher Power Coaching and Consulting. I want to welcome you to my podcast, Fragmented to Whole, Life Lessons from 12-Step Recovery. This is episode 40, Feeling Trapped, There Is a Way Out. Feeling trapped is something that I've experienced, so I know what it's like for those of you who are feeling trapped right now or have felt that way in the past. Now I live happy, joyous, and free most of the time. If you had ever told me back then that I'd be living with a sense of freedom for years on end, I never would have believed you. Feeling trapped is one of the things that got me into recovery, as a matter of fact. So whether you feel trapped in your life, in a relationship, in an employment situation, in your home, whatever it is that makes you feel trapped, there is a way out. You can get out of this. I am living proof. One of the times I remember feeling trapped was when I was living with my then boyfriend, We had moved in together and rented a home that was large enough for his three almost grown children to each have their own room. Before we moved in together, his apartment didn't have enough space for all of his kids to have their own room. And after we lived together for a while, I became really depressed. It wasn't the first time I've had episodes of depression on and off my whole adult life. And this was a particularly difficult episode. Looking back, I now know that I became depressed because I was in an extremely codependent relationship and I was trying to deny my feelings. I wanted to leave, but I felt trapped. I kept telling myself, I need to be 100% certain that leaving is the thing that I want to do because that decision wouldn't just affect me and him, it would affect his entire family. Now, mind you, I created this entire situation. I am the one that suggested we move in together. I am the one that suggested we rent an entire house that was big enough for all of his kids to have their own room. But I didn't think of any of that stuff at the time. And I just couldn't see a way out. I couldn't see a way out of the relationship. I couldn't see a way out of the house. I couldn't handle the idea of breaking up with him, then having to live there while I moved out. And because I was depressed, I knew that there was no way it could be the kind of situation where I would break up and move in one day. Even though a couple of people said to me, why don't you just move out without breaking up with him? I heard them, but it just didn't sink in. It just didn't feel like an option for some reason. I was so depressed that the thought of even moving, of packing and moving all the boxes and the furniture was just too much for me. I kept feeling this really strong drain of energy, especially when I would think about doing that. Almost like I was a big hunk of steel and the earth was a magnet just pulling me down. This drain of energy was just profound. And it finally sunk into me emotionally that I could and should leave when my nephew, who was 17 at the, at the time, said to me, you know, Auntie Barb, two years ago, I heard you making these same exact complaints about this guy. And if nothing has changed in two years, it's probably not going to change. Damn. Now, none of that was new information, but the fact that it came out of the mouth of a fucking 17-year-old made it impossible for me to ignore. The next morning, I woke up and I was like, wait, I could just move out. I don't have to break up with him, which made it seem doable to me. What I told myself was that if I could just get some alone time again, 
back, get back to my life as I knew it before. Then I could build up my energy reserves and then I'd have the emotional availability for him again. What actually happened was that once I moved out and I was on my own again, the contrast between what my life was like on my own compared to what it was like when I went back to visit him after we separated was so stark because it was so awful to be there that I just couldn't do it. I couldn't stay in a relationship with him and I broke up with him. Fast forward to the next time I felt trapped, which is what got me into recovery. I had been volunteering on a project serving homeless people through my church and I befriended a homeless guy named Dan. And one time during a snowstorm, I invited him to stay at my home and he did. And he stayed another time a little way later and another time. And four months later, he was practically living at my home. And I felt absolutely trapped. I felt trapped in my own home. I had no idea how I was going to get out of the situation, how I was going to get rid of him. He was definitely an addict, but I think he also might have been a narcissist and I'm not sure what else, but he was really fucking with my head a lot. And I did eventually get out of that situation and the other situations in which I felt trapped. And it was not because someone waved a magic wand or because someone else came and rescued me or those people just sort of flipped a switch and turned into the kind of people I wanted them to be. It was because I took action. In both of these cases I've just described, I finally took action instead of spending all of my time in my head trying to think my way out of things, trying to reason things out like, well, if I do this, then he'll do that. Or if I say this, then maybe he'll whatever. It wasn't until I took action that I was able to get out of feeling trapped and notice that I said feeling trapped, not being trapped. Because even though I felt like I was trapped, I was not. It was just my perception. It was just my thinking that I was trapped that caused me to feel trapped. It was my thinking that there was no way out that caused me to feel like there was no way out that caused me to feel trapped. I was not in fact trapped except for in my mind. So I am here to tell you that even though you may feel trapped in your life, whether it's in a relationship, in a family, in a home, in an employment situation, there is hope. You can get out of it. You are not, in fact, trapped, but you're not going to reason your way out of it. You've got to come out of your head and do something. You must act. You have to take action. If you are waiting for someone to come along and do that for you, it's not going to happen. If you're someone who thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks and thinks, take a look at where that's gotten you. It's gotten you where you're feeling trapped in your circumstances and you need help getting out of those negative thought loops. If you want to hear about how to get out of them, consider going back and listening to episode four, Overcoming Negative Thought Loops, because I spent much of my life before recovery in negative thought loops. All the therapy and all the self-help book reading I did did not help me with that. It's something I did for decades. I would think through like every conceivable scenario and I'd say, okay, well, he's going to say this and then I'm going to say that and then he's going to do this and then I'm going to do that. And I would get all activated and upset and triggered and in anxiety and unable to move. And not one of those fucking scenarios that I envisioned has ever happened in my life. Not one of them. And none of that thinking 
over and over and over again has in any way helped to change my life. It was a complete waste of time and a waste of energy. And now that I'm past it, I can also say for certain that it actually made things worse rather than better. I am here to tell you that if you want the kind of life where you are happy, joyous, and free, which is the kind of life I have most of the time, you have got to take some kind of action. And this is why such slogans as do the next right thing and one day at a time are so important. We can't focus on an entire situation at once if we ever want to get anything done. Doing so absolutely paralyzed me. It made me unable to act and likely contributed to my depression. I was talking with a fellow in recovery the other day who feels trapped. She started thinking about 15 steps down the road, like what happens if blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, 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 we're not thinking 15 steps down the road. That's what paralyzes you. We're thinking about just one step, the next one. We take one step at a time. And sometimes it's just one moment at a time. When you have a really complex problem, the way you solve it is by breaking it down into pieces so you can tackle them one at a time so that it's doable. You may have heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. You wouldn't try to stuff the whole thing in your mouth at once because it's so big. So when you have an elephant sized problem, you tackle it one bite at a time. You do one bite thing at a time. And notice that I said, do you do one thing at a time. You don't think you do, you act, you take action. So what is one action that you could do right now that would get you out of your head and taking action on the world? Because you simply thinking over and over and over again about your problem is part of the problem. It's keeping you stuck and possibly keeping you blaming other people for your situation, which means you feel like you are a victim of the circumstances and that you have no part to play. Well, my friends, you do have a part to play. I had victim mentality and there's another episode also called overcoming victim mentality that I can help you with that too. Your thinking is not helping you just as my thinking was not helping me. You have to act. It could be simply picking up the phone and asking someone something or Googling something If you're sitting around waiting for someone to come and save you or for something to just miraculously happen to fix things, it's not going to happen. Stop the fantasizing. Whether it's good fantasies or bad ones, stop it. Fantasizing keeps you in isolation because no one can join you there in your head. Recovery teaches that we need to take action and how to take action. My first sponsor used to say to me all the time, action, 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 action. This is a program of action. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you believe. It matters what you do. And the reality is life is a program of action. People who have joy in their lives are people who are taking action. People who are feeling trapped in their lives are often not taking action. They're stuck in their heads. And I do understand that sometimes this has to do with mental health problems. I've suffered from them myself, but realistically, you've got to take action to deal with your mental health problems. 
You might need to see a professional. You probably need to be in therapy. You might need to be medicated at least temporarily. You might need to go to group therapy. If you're in recovery, you know that coming out of isolation is a huge part of recovery because you cannot heal alone. 12 step programs are we programs. We recover together. We're compulsive, obsessive, and addictive in isolation. So take some kind of action right now before you turn the podcast off. Call someone, text someone, Google to find the help that you need and do the next right thing for yourself because no one is going to rescue you. You can do one tiny little thing, then another tiny little thing and another and another. And the next thing you know, you will have eaten an entire elephant. If you're feeling trapped, I get it. I've been there. I am living proof that it's possible to get out of that. It's possible to go from feeling trapped to freedom. So go. Go now and do the next right thing. That's it for today. If you like what you've heard here, then you just might be interested in private coaching with me. If that sounds like you, head on over to my website, which is higherpowercoachingandconsulting.com and click on the contact menu. I'd be happy to schedule a consultation with you to help you make lasting changes in your life like I've made deep lasting changes in my life. My ideal client is someone who is ripe for change, but I'll coach anyone who wants to be happy, joyous, and free. So if that's you, shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can be sure to get future episodes of my podcast. Thanks again.